Home field advantage can suck for the opposing teams, but it is a blessing for others. The Jaguars have one of the worst fan bases in all of the NFL. For some NFL teams, there truly is no place like home. These teams are practically unbeatable inside their own stadiums, with tens of thousands of screaming fans on their side. But for other clubs, their home venue is a sad place, where the losses have ramped up a plenty over time. With that, it's time to reveal our rankings for all 32 NFL home field advantages, from worst to first for 2021. And a big shout out to Larry Williams for suggesting this video. Number 32, Jacksonville Jaguars. Home field advantage, more like home field disadvantage in Duval County. Dating back to 2011, Jacksonville only finished above .500 at TIAA Bank Field once. That was in 2017, when they went a superb 6-2. Jacksonville used to be an intimidating environment. This team went 7-1 at home four straight years, from 96 to 99. But those days are long gone. Attendance always ranks near the bottom. And for those few fans who do attend TIAA Bank Field, are usually cheering for the visiting team. We'll see if Trevor Lawrence and Urban Meyer can entice their locals to start showing up again. Number 31, New York Jets. Fans in Gotham simply haven't gotten their money Worth. Well, actually, they went 5-3 and three at MetLife Stadium in 2019. But otherwise, it's mostly been a painful game day experience for Jets fans as far as the results go. Dating back to 2014, they've won two or fewer home games in four different seasons. Yikes. Number 30, Washington football team. Even though they won the NFC East in 2020, Washington still won 3-5 and five at home. That doesn't include their wild card round loss to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Amid awful ownership and disturbing scandals, the team has seen its attendance and ticket sales decline rapidly in recent years. This once proud fan base has allowed more and more visitors to take over FedEx Field. The result? Washington has gone 7-17 seven and 17 at home over the last three years. Number 29, New York Giants. The Giants, like the Jets, sell more than enough tickets to their locals. That's not the problem, but the passionate and loyal G-Men supporters haven't been enough to influence the outcome of their team's games. From 2017 to 2020, the Giants won an embarrassing 9-23 and 23 at home. Aside from an excellent 7-1 record at MetLife in 2016, the Giants have recorded a losing home record every year since 2014. Number 28, Detroit Lions. Matthew Stafford gave it his all, but Ford Field was home to very few fond memories during the QB's final four seasons there. After going 6-2 at home in 2016, the Lions followed it up with four wins, three wins, two wins, and one win in each of the next four seasons at Ford Field. It should come as no surprise that their attendance per game average has ranked in the bottom 10 every year dating back to 2013. Number 27, Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals have been among the football's worst teams since 2016, and their play at Paul Brown Stadium hasn't helped. It's therefore no surprise to see a noticeable drop in their attendance. From 2017 to 2019, the Bengals ranked a woeful 31st in fans per game average. What more can we say? Cincinnati fans aren't going to keep wasting money on bad football until hopefully Joe Burrow can change that. Number 26, Los Angeles Chargers. How do you rank them? On the one hand, the Chargers have finished above .500 at home on four occasions, dating back to 2013, and they were an even 4-4 four and four in another season, but the attendance was very low at Dignity Health Sports Park, and it seemed like there were always more away fans than home supporters in attendance. But now the Chargers share the beautiful new SoFi Stadium in Inglewood with the Rams. Of course, neither team had fans inside during the 2020 season, so let's wait and see how this plays out. Number 25, Las Vegas Raiders. The Raiders obviously felt it, not having any fans inside Allegiant Stadium during the 2020 season. Six of their eight wins came on the road, and six of their losses took place at home. Even before the relocation to Vegas, the Raiders finished with a losing record at home, a ridiculous 12 times from 2004 to 2019. The fans in Oakland were an extremely passionate and loyal bunch, but the football team just didn't give them much to celebrate in the final decade and a half there. Perhaps a sold-out Allegiant Stadium will reverse the team's misfortunes at home. Number 24, Chicago Bears. Remember when Soldier Field was one of the best home advantages in the country. From 2003 to 2013, Chicago won five plus home games nine times, and they had a trio of playoff victories there as well. Boy, have things ever changed though. Here are Chicago's win total at Soldier Field every year from 2014 to 2020. In order, 2-1-3-3-7-4-3. Seems like high attendance numbers and a thunderous Chicago crowd just isn't enough for these Bears anymore. 
Number 23, San Francisco 49ers. The move to Levi's Stadium in 2014 hasn't been pretty as far as the results go. San Fran compiled an excellent 19-4-1 home record over their final three years at Candlestick Park. That includes two home playoff victories. Since then, they've had one winning season at home in 2019, when the team went 6-2 and, and made it all the way to the Super Bowl. One year later in 2020, seven of their 10 losses took place at home. It's a big yikes. Number 22, Arizona Cardinals. Remarkably, Arizona didn't go below 0.500 at home from 2006 to 2017. There were 4.500 showings in there, and the rest were winning seasons. Fans were getting their money's worth, even if the football team was, in a word, inconsistent. But things have changed for the worse since 2018. Over the next three years, Arizona went just 7-16-1 at State Farm Stadium. They don't have problems filling up the stadium. But no matter how many Arizona fans are present, it clearly isn't enough to influence the on-field results. Number 21, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Sure, they won the Super Bowl last season, on their own field for that matter. But for the most part, Raymond James Stadium hasn't been much of an advantage for the Bucs. This team is always near the very bottom of the league in attendance. The lack of winning throughout most of the past 15 years obviously hasn't helped matters. Tampa won 5-3 and three at home in the regular season last year. This marked their first winning record at home since 2008. Number 20, Cleveland Browns. Yes, they were far and away the worst NFL franchise in the 21st century before the magical 2020 season. But the dog pound has been a pain for visitors since Baker Mayfield's 2018 rookie year. Cleveland has gone a stellar 15-8-1 at home over the last three years, after going a combined 1-15 in the two years prior. This is a team on the rise, and we expect First Energy Stadium to be a terror for visitors over the long run. Number 19, Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons have mostly been good at home in the Matt Ryan era, dating back to his 08 rookie year. They went above .500 at home seven times from 2008 to 2020, but Atlanta has gone a lackluster 9-15 at home over the last three years. At least attendance is usually near the top 10 most years. Number 18, Dallas Cowboys. If you look up inconsistent in the dictionary, you'll see the Dallas Cowboys home record. Just look at their home win totals dating back to 2009. 6254541737754. Leading the league in attendance every year is nice and all. But wow, the Cowboys performance at AT&T Stadium is like a box full of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. Number 17, Denver Broncos. Denver won a superb 33-7 at home over a five-year span from 2012 to 2016, thanks in large part to Peyton Manning. But since 2017, the Broncos have gone a mere 14-18 and 18 at home. At least they're still selling out every home game, despite the mediocre performances. Number 16, Carolina Panthers. The Cam Newton era is over, and Carolina's home play has suffered as a result. They won 2-6 at home in both 2019 and 2020. So why are they in the top half? Well, they consistently place in the top 10 for total attendance. And the Panthers were a very good home team during Newton's prime years. So yeah. Now let's see if Sam Darnold and company can bring that home field advantage back to Bank of America Stadium in 2021. Number 15, Miami Dolphins. Attendance is consistently in the middle of the pack. But Hard Rock Stadium can be a tough atmosphere for anybody. Just ask Tom Brady. The place was TB12's kryptonite during his 20 years with the New England Patriots. The Finns have gone 24-16 and 16 at home since the 2016 campaign. That's better than most teams. Number 14, Houston Texans. Yes, they went just two and six at home in 2020 and figured to be very bad for a few years here. But you can't discount Houston's record and overall success at NRG Stadium. Total attendance is in the top half of the league. They've gone above .500 seven times at home dating back to 2011. And all four of the franchise's playoff wins have come in NRG Stadium. For the most part, Houston fans are getting their money's worth. Number 13, Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings alternate between playoff and non-playoff seasons. But at least folks in the Gopher Stadium are mostly getting good returns when they invest money to watch their team play at home. Many went above .500 at home in eight straight years from 2012 to 2019 before going a disappointing 3-5 and five in the 2020 season. This is also one of the noisiest venues in the country, even in non-playoff years. The Vikings are a force at home. Number 12, Los Angeles Rams. The Rams have sure turned a corner under Sean McVay, going a very respectable 22-10 and 10 at home through his first four seasons on the job. But like the Chargers, the Rams have struggled to recruit their own fans, and many home games bring in large quantities of opposing team supporters. Will the Chargers in SoFi Stadium? Who knows? Number 11, Buffalo Bills. Even during their toughest years, Buffalo was still a difficult opponent to face at Highmark Stadium, thanks to the Bills' rabid fan base. Did you know they've gone .500 or better at home in every season since 2011? Yeah, yeah, that does include five seasons of four and four, 
but still the other five were winning seasons. Now that the Bills are emerging as a powerhouse, it's about to get even more difficult for visitors. Good luck. Number 10, Tennessee Titans. Nissan Stadium has been one of the NFL's best home advantages since 2016. Overall attendance is meh, but at the end of the day, the Titans have recorded winning seasons at home in four of their last five seasons, with their only non-winning season coming in 2019, when they finished .500 with a 4-4 four four record. Derrick Henry and Ryan Tannehill have changed everything about this franchise. Nissan Stadium is no longer a friendly place for visitors. Number 9, Indianapolis Colts. Absolutely incredible stuff. The Colts have just three losing seasons at home dating back to 1999. Those came in 2001, 2011, and 2017, of course. They also didn't have Peyton Manning or Andrew Luck in 2011 or 2019, respectively. So why aren't the Colts higher? While well, they were .500 at Lucas Oil Stadium in 2015 and 2016, then 3-5 in 2017, then 6-2 in 2018, then 5-3 in 2019, then back to 6-2 in 2020. It's been a roller coaster for these Colts at home, but it's mostly an upwards ride. Number 8, Philadelphia Eagles. Any sports venue in Philly can be intimidating for visiting teams. Everyone knows that by now. Lincoln Financial Field has consistently been a tough place for away teams. Philly has finished above .500 at home in four of the past five years. The Eagles are mostly winners at home, and the strong attendance and intense crowd energy obviously plays a factor in that. Number 7, Pittsburgh Steelers. Remarkably, the Steelers haven't finished below .500 at home since 99. That was back in the good old Three River Stadium days. Not only that, but they've had a winning record every year at Heinz Field since 2004. Steelers season tickets are safe investments, folks. You're guaranteed a minimum of five home wins a year. And who doesn't love the terrible towels? Number six, New England Patriots. They'd be number one in many other years, but playoffs included. The Patriots have dropped six home games over the last two seasons. That's not very good considering the dominance that their fans were used to seeing at Gillette Stadium during the Tom Brady era. New England never went worse than five and three at home with Brady. They went eight and oh, seven times and seven and one three times. They only lost four home playoff games in the Brady Belichick era. We'll see if Gillette Stadium can remain a nightmare for visitors in the post Brady days. Number five, New Orleans Saints. The Saints lost their final three home playoff games in the Drew Brees era. But at least the Saints have, for the most part, sent their fans home happy since 2017. New Orleans has compiled an excellent 25 and seven record at the Superdome over the last four seasons. Now, if they could just find that same success at home in January. Number four, Green Bay Packers. The Pack have been ridiculously good at home since Aaron Rodgers took over as the starter in 2008. Number 12 has compiled a 78-19-1 record at Lambeau Field. Green Bay has gone 8-0 twice and 7-1 four times dating back to 2010. They're simply one of the best sports franchises when it comes to defending their home field. Number 3, Baltimore Ravens. Simply amazing stuff. With the exception of their injury-ravaged 2015 season, when they went 3-5, the Ravens have been above .500 at home every year since 2008. That includes one 8-0 season, two Two seven and one seasons and seven six and three seasons. In fact, the Ravens only recorded the losing record at home on two occasions during their quarter century in the league in 1997 and 2015. Number two, Kansas City Chiefs. With Patrick Mahomes now in the fold, good luck escaping Arrowhead with the win. KC has only dropped four home games in the regular season since Mahomes' arrival in 2018. Arrowhead was already a tough enough place to visit before the Chiefs drafted the MVP quarterback in 2017. Heck, the fan base even broke the open air stadium noise record during the 20. 14 home game against the Patriots. How loud was it? How about 142.2 decibels? Wow. Number one, Seattle Seahawks. They don't call it the 12th man for nothing. Even before the glorious Russell Wilson era began, the Seahawks fans held a reputation for being the loudest among all NFL fan bases. Remember the Beastquake game? Even when the Seahawks were mediocre, the 12th man provided an insane advantage. Also, the results speak for themselves. The team is 55 and 17 at home since Wilson's 2012 rookie year. That's kind of ridiculous. Which team do you think has the best home field advantage in the NFL? Join me in the comment section below. Make sure to follow myself and TPS on social media. We post great content all the time. Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, or on everything, go subscribe, go follow. If you like this video, give it a like. It takes one click down below and subscribe to TPS. We post videos every day. Every day is a new video. Of course, thank you so much for watching. Jason Biondo. I'll see you next time. My knee.